Coach Saima and welcome to Sports Shoes YouTube channel. Today I will be taking you through a strength and conditioning workout that is great for runners. Why is strength and conditioning important for runners? Well, it has the potential to reduce the risk of injury by improving your imbalances, helps with better activation of your muscles and it will help your biomechanics and improve your running. I will take you through seven exercises that will really help build your strength and improve your running performance. But before we do that, we're going to go through a warm up. We're going to start off on all fours. Have your hands directly under your shoulders, your knees directly under your hips. We're going to start moving each vertebrae from the base of the spine, lifting our head up, breathing in. And then we're going to start to tuck the chin in, arching the back, pushing the hands into the ground, breathing out. So we're just going for some cat cows and we'll get about four reps in. Really driving those hands into the ground. That's three. Last one. And two. We're gonna to touch on the thoracic spine now. So let's just place our hand by the side of our temple. Elbow touches the forearm on the opposite side and raise that elbow up nice and high. Now keep your eyes locked onto your elbow and we're going for three reps each side. Switching sides and again remembering to breathe in through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth. Final rep on this side. Perfect. From here, we're coming up into a kneeling position. We're going to have our hands out in front, thumbs up and gradually bring them all the way up. When you get to that biting point, turn your thumbs around and drive them towards your hips. Stop there and reverse. So we're just going for some shoulder cars and we're breathing in, turning all the way towards the hips and then bringing that all the way around keeping your hips forward as well slightly so you've tucked that tailbone under last repetition good let's bring this left foot forward now so the foot is ankles on underneath your knee tuck that tailbone under and we're going to slightly lean forward into that you'll feel that in your hip flexor here and we're going to lift this hand up and reach towards the side you'll feel a little bit more of a pull on your hip flexor as you're doing this just hold that for another five, four, three, two, and one. From here, let's push the hips back. You might need to adjust your heel at the front. You should then therefore feel the stretch going calf to hamstring. We're going to rock backwards and forwards just so we make it a little bit more dynamic. And it's not about bringing your hips down to the floor, just bring the hips back and then forward. Last rep. Awesome, switch sides and again, ankle underneath the knee. Let's tuck that tailbone under, shift forward slightly, bring that hand up and reach across to the other side. Let's hold that for five, four, three, two, and we're going to rock forward and then we're bringing the hips back. Now, as you do this, as soon as you start to move back, just lift those front toes up for me at the same time. Lovely, last repetition. Perfect, awesome. We're going to work on the hips now. So we're going to make a 90-90 shape with our feet. And the idea is to lift that top leg up first. And then when you start feeling that pinch in the hips, then bring the bottom leg around and switch and turn. You can place your hands on the floor as well if it's a little bit tricky. And we're going for about four reps each side. Once you're comfortable with the movement, then you don't need to use the hands. Get the last rep in. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna warm up the glutes this time. So we're gonna lie back down onto our back. Make sure the back is nice and flat. Raise your foot up in the air. And you're going to lift your hips up, squeeze the glutes, drop your hips. Lift the hips up and down. We're going for six repetitions. Anywhere six to 10 is great. And then you're switching sides. Four, two more left. Last one. Perfect. All right, let's get up onto our feet. 
Now let's just warm up uh, the knees. So we're just gonna bounce, keep those knees almost locked, use those arms, and just start elevating up nice and high. And rest, give yourself 10 seconds, and then we'll go through that again. We'll go in three, two, one, and again, keeping those knees almost locked, slightly soft, but the movement's coming from the feet. And rest, good. We'll do one more round of that in five, four, three, two, one, and explode up. Good. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Good. All right, let's go do it. Box step up. This will be our first exercise. All you need is a simple box that's high enough for you to step on and off for. Weights are additional, start off without them and then slowly build them up. This is really good for building your strength, uh, single leg strength, and to be able to work on your ankle mobility and also when you're running, you're almost propelling forward. So to help work on your core and your stability, we're gonna start off by building up our posterior chain and working on that through box step ups. Okay, all you're going to do is plant one foot on the box like so. And as you lean into the box, apply the pressure on your whole foot and gradually stand up nice and tall. Make sure you bring your hips forward and they're not flexed at any point. Once you're standing nice and tall, step straight back down and bring that foot back down again. Now we're going for the other foot. Place a foot on the box and the whole foot is pressing down into the box. Lean into the box, stand tall, and then step off. We'll grab some weights, step on, stand tall, and then step back off. We're going to go for anywhere between six to 10 reps on each leg, and we will work for three sets in total. Movement number two are box jumps. These are great for helping you with your landing and speed and just being able to just jump up with great height and improve your imbalance as well. Okay, so we're gonna start off by stepping back away from the box and you want to have soft knees and slightly push your hips back. Don't be afraid to use your arms to jump up as well. So bracing the core, taking a deep breath in, land nice and softly in the squat and then stand up. Now, when you're doing the box jumps, make sure it's not a loud thud that you hear. You want it to be as quiet as possible. If you're slightly nervous, then start off from the top position and then jump back down and land into a squat. I'd like you to go for three sets, five repetitions. Exercise number three will be the sled push and pull. Uh, the importance of this is to build overall general endurance. It's a great all over body conditioning exercise and it's also great to help with your knees and your ankles. And we're gonna get going. So you want to make sure you've got your hands not at the top of the, uh, the poles. Drive them down a little bit lower. Push your hips back and you want to just use your toes. So you're just gonna push the sled and as you're doing that, you're driving your feet into the ground and you come forward. So you wanna really drive your knees forward as you're doing this. We're then going to sit back. We're gonna keep our feet nice and close. So you want your toes in, lean back, chest up and pull that all the way back. And then we're gonna go again. So fast feet, and about 20 meters if you can. Exercise number four is the barbell back squat. This will be great to help build overall strength in your legs, especially targeting your quads and your glutes. Before we get into the movement, we're just gonna talk quickly about having the right footwear. You want to make sure you avoid having 
your standard running shoes only because that will really create imbalances and you're not going to have the correct stability when you're performing the barbell back squat. Try and aim for something that is more flat based so you can really connect with the ground and the movement as you're going through the squats. I'm currently wearing the Adidas The Totals and the great thing I love about this is that, well, there's lots of reasons why I love this basically. One, it's really spacious. You've got plenty of room for your shoes to be completely sprawled out. They're flat based as well. You can also take the insole out. There's not a lot of he height in the heel, um, which is also super important. When you're squatting, you want to be able to make sure that you're pushing your feet into the ground. And the only part of your foot that isn't actually connected is the inner part of your arch that's just here. So all of this is essential to have flat so you can really feel your feet being pushed into the ground. There's also a really nice grip on here as well, which is suitable for all sort of surface areas as well. All right, so we're gonna go into the squat. We want to make sure our hands are equally aligned on the bar before we go and get ourselves underneath. I want you to think about putting a tight belt on and just squeezing your core, ladies' pelvic floor muscles as well, bracing that and keeping it tight the whole time. We're going to be breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth, and we're breathing out laterally. Have the bar sitting just below your bone, just at the top here and make sure you squeeze your shoulder blades together as well. Take a step back. Now have your feet slightly wider than hip width apart. You can also drive your toes slightly out. Tuck the tailbone under, squeeze the shoulder blades, take a deep breath in. Sit down into that squat, drive the feet into the ground and stand up, breathing out. Let's go for five reps in total. And drive up, walk forward, let the bar hit the rack and place it down. Now the good thing with these shoes is that because they're flat, you won't be rocking your heels side to side. You know how you're connecting with the ground and it will help you drive yourself up in that tall standing position much more efficiently. Exercise number five will be front foot heel elevated split squats. Um, and the reason we want to train this is because the most impact that you will have when you're running will be on the calf muscles. So it's really vital that you train them really well and you want to aim for higher reps sometimes um, when, if you're doing calf raises. But in this instance, we're gonna stick to about eight to 12 repetitions and see how that feels. Uh, if they start burning, then try and stick through the repetitions. If not, then you can do half reps one side and then the other and then repeat. Okay, so the idea is you place half of your foot on top of a step or a plate. So the heel will be elevated. Now again, the benefit of the shoe is your, thing, your toes are sprawled out. And again, you want to make sure you're pushing all of your toes into the platform. Bring yourself into a wide split stance like this. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either keep yourself upright, drive your back knee down and be more in this position where it's 90-90, work the quads. Or if you want slightly healthier knees, then you can go forward into it. Don't worry about your knees going over the toes. That's quite fine. Dropping the back knee. And then as you're going into this position, you will feel that slight strain in your calf and you're just pushing this part of the foot down. We're going to go for six reps for now, but obviously go for six to 12 if you can. So front foot, find that positioning, take a deep breath in. And whilst you're doing this, maybe start off body weighted, see how it feels. And if you're comfortable, then just go straight into building it up 
with some weights. Now, as you start going through the repetitions, I can feel that burning already. If you find yourself, your heel is going down, maybe just adjust yourself and come a little bit further forward and make sure it's just the front part of the foot that you're actually pressing into the plate. Four, last five, final one, and six. Exercise number six is the B stance RDL. Uh, this works two movements, hamstrings as well as glutes. So it's basically a standard RDL, but we're gonna switch up the positioning and that's gonna help again with your flexibility, working the toe grips, and it's gonna hit the glutes a little bit more. So starting off in this tall position, tuck your tailbone under. With the left leg, we're going to bring the toes so they're just slightly past the heel. You're going to lift the heel up. Now in this position, if you feel a slight little pinch, then the good thing about this is you can loosen up the strap, adjust it, and then release any tension. From here, have your hands nice and straight. Keep your chin tucked down. You're going to push your hips back. As you push your hips back, this leg is relatively straight. I've got a minimal bend. I can feel that in the back of the hamstrings. I come up, squeeze the glutes, and I've hit the glutes as well. So again, start off body weighted. If you're comfortable, then hit on some weights. All right, we're going for eight to 12 repetitions. Chin down, drive the dumbbells nice and close. Feel that in the hamstrings, drive up quick, squeeze. Breathing in. Three, hinging forward, that's four. When you come into this position, you only need to basically bring your hands mid shin level. You don't wanna drop your, chin, uh, your chest too low and then you're done with the reps. We'll switch sides. Again, toes just slightly behind the heel, hinging forward, keeping that chin down. So basically keep your eyes on your toes eight to 12, and if you find the weights are not challenging enough, then by all means, increase them as you go along. Three sets, eight to 12 repetitions. Exercise seven is the deadlift, and it's my favorite movement because it's the one and only movement you can lift the heaviest load in. Okay, so there's a few key points that we need to really remember when we're doing the deadlift and we're gonna talk you through them. The first thing is you want to have your hip feet hip width apart uh, and slightly closer. So you might think this is hip width, just bring the foot in slightly closer and make sure that it's in the center of the bar. Now, when I'm looking down at the bar, the bar is lined over the strap. So that's a really good thing about where the straps are placed on the, uh, the total because it just helps you setting up your feet really well. The next thing we want to think about is our core. Again, same as the squats. Make sure you've got that imaginary belt on. Ladies, zip up that pelvic floor muscle. Squeeze the core. It's a lot more better engagement. We're next going to come down and have our hands just on the outside of where the groove starts. So there's plenty of grooves on the barbell. Make sure your hands are in an equal position. The elbows want to sit outside the knees. We're then going to lift our chest up and that's going to automatically bring our hips far back as well. Core is engaged, feet, core, hands, and we're gonna bring those shoulders back. So imagine you've got two tennis balls in your armpits and you're squeezing those tennis balls, so we engage the lats as well. So, ready, take a deep breath in. You're going to glide the barbell up the shin, stand nice and tall, hips come forward. We're not hyperextending. We're now going to push the hips back. So think RDL. As soon as the bar comes past the knees, we sit into that deadlift. Now, when you're in that deadlift position, you're here, you want to make a V shape with your hips slightly higher than your knees. Chest needs to be high, but not too high. 
The barbell and your shins need to be the best of friends to try and keep them vertical. Now, the good thing about these, the totals, is that again, same as a squat, make sure you're connecting with the ground. So the only part of your foot and the shoe that shouldn't be touching or feeling the floor is the arch. So make sure feet are nice and flat. You're pushing your toes and your heels into the ground. We're going for five repetitions and three sets. So feet, hands, brace. And that is it. We are all done. That's your workout. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the workout, then make sure you hit the like button. If you're going to try it and you would like to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Let us know how you get on in the comments and we will see you on the next workout soon.